Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And also turn your notification bells to all our returning subscribers. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for being part of the family and also loving Value Farm and also loving everything that we are doing at Value Farm. It's another day at Value Farm and the sun is out. We're in the goat section. Very happy. And of course, I'm here with my co-director. He's going to say hello to you guys. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Grafton. Um, as you can see, we're definitely standing in a goat pen. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely the house that we actually started, I would say, a couple months back. Yeah, like and, three months um, ago. Yeah. And so part of the reason why we wanted to do that, we wanted to basically isolate the two flocks because we have, you know, goats that are crosses and we also have some of the pures here. So as the pure flock continues to grow, we wanted to actually have their own unit, right? So yeah. we're going to have the females here and we're going to keep the, uh, the males in the, the original outside. house on the other side and of course this house as you can see is elevated mm -hmm. <laughs> right yes we're about four feet off the ground and the reason we do this is because we believe based on research based on talking to many 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 professionals out there who are in this business for quite some time they believe having an elevated house is the prudent way to go because if you keep your goats low to the ground, as they urinate, as they defecate, obviously, you don't want them standing in their own fit. The goats are very, very clean animals. But if you keep them confined in a tight space, tight quarters, where they can't get away from the, that ammonia, that's how they can get sick, and that's how your mortality rate would be north of 50%. So <laughs> one way to mitigate that is to give them a platform is elevated. Great elevated home so that way as they do their business it can fall through it could easily be swept away and then of course you have healthier goats the healthier your goats the how better your overall multiplications are gonna be it's yeah. as simple as that wow that is really so good and of course to just give you the basics of this structure i know most of you want the plans want to have the same in your farms as well yeah. but we use simple items simple materials yeah. in this goat house not to break the bank to build a goat house so we simply use the timber eucalyptus poles as well then we use also the wire mesh yeah that is what we literally used here and the house is already here. I so. think the most pricey part of this bill was the iron sheets. Iron sheets, yeah. As well as that. the cost of the cement uh -huh. to actually elevate the platform, right? And the reason we use the cement is so that we wouldn't have to worry about rotting. Especially yeah, that we, is another thing. The house here has to be washed constantly. You know, what we do is we actually have a regiment where the, the platform itself gets brushed on a daily basis, right? So for some of the dropping straight through automatically, um, they actually get brushed out as well as once a week, it's the scrub. house is actually scrubbed so that we get rid of any lingering effects, any lingering pathogens, and I mean fully disinfected. Yeah. And of course, where the house is faced, when the sunlight hits it, it naturally disinfects the house while we go that extra step. That is true. Right, to make sure that a scrub is clean, in that the environment stays as clean, clean as possible, possible, right? Because we want healthy goats here. Exactly. And talking about also aeration, you don't want your goats to be really too much enclosed. You need them to have fresh air. You need them to also breathe like any other person. You need ventilation in your house. So at least the goats here also have enough aeration, enough light for them as well. And there's good space. And of course, as we always discussed in other videos, if you've watched our goat series videos, we've talked about separating our goats according to the breeds, according to their situation, if they're pregnant, their kids, all that. So they have enough space so that they can have, you know, space to stretch not to be squeezed because that is going to really harm your guts in the long run. And also talking about Speaking like- Speaking of squeeze guys, that's mm. a very easy way for you guys to have a number of unforeseen, I would say unforced errors because some folks think, you know, if the pen is built for like 200 goats, mm -hmm. they can squeeze maybe 350 <laughs> yeah. in that space. And when you do that, you're gonna find some of your pregnant goats are gonna be too confined and believe me, when they feel like they're too confined, that's where an ammonia can come in, all types of other disease can come into play. But the worst thing that will happen when the goats are squeezed and confined, you'll find they're gonna fight, 
-hmm. And the pregnant ghosts, especially if you don't isolate them from the general population, even the pregnant ghosts, if they're too confined amongst each other, they will fight True. and they will have miscarriages. And believe me, if those miscarriages continue to occur, your farm is not growing. So be safe with your numbers. You should never build a pen for a specific number of goats, right? True. So you don't want to be the person with 100 goats building a pen for 200 goats. 200 goats. goats. <laughs> because six months later, you're going to have to build a pen for four to 500 goats. So we always tell you, even if you have a 50 goats you're starting out with, build up in for at least 250 goats, right? That is true. If you intend to go commercial. But if you're doing it just for fun, then you don't even need a house like this to begin with. Oh, wow, that is really so true. And also talking about how they can be able to hurt themselves. On the side, you can see we have some iron sheets. We have timber on it. You don't want to make the iron sheets really very close to your animals because this can hurt them in the long run. You need to be very, very careful with the construction. Make sure they're not close to anything that can easily cut them, like the nails, they're not protruding, the iron sheets are not close to them. That is what you need to take care of. And also I wanted to talk about the flooring. I know most of you may be asking, like the inches that we left down below here. The we left the spacing. Yes, it is half an inch that we left below so that the droppings can easily drop down and also this spacing cannot hurt our kids, our goats, the legs, I mean. Maximum one inch, but the ideal number you're looking for is half an inch. But the key advice we would both like to impress upon you out there, mm. please and please, when it comes to picking a contractor or carpenter to do this work for you, yeah. You treat this like the one good suit you're gonna have to go to that special wedding, mm -hmm. to go to every job interview where you need to nail that interview to get hired. You don't go cheap, okay? You stay within your budget, you take your time, but you find a qualified carpenter because in this country, people will never tell you they're not capable of doing the job. They will always tell you whatever it is that I you can. describe, even if you describe a house, that's floating on jet propulsion systems, you know, that hasn't even invented yet. They're gonna tell you, yeah, oh yeah, I'm able to do that. Yeah, of course, right? of course, why and not? you being eager, you being mm. excited, you wanting to get into the business, you can't wait to get started, that's how you're gonna get burned. Yeah. So what we urge you, especially from experience, you want to interview at least three, if not four, if not five carpenters. And before they start working at your place, go see work they've actually done. done yeah because a lot of these guys some of them they're they're very fake they'll take pictures of other people's work and they claim that oh i did this this is my work and then you bring them to your farm and they give you something that a third grader can actually conjure up so you have to be careful you have to be picky and you also have to be cognizant of not going cheap yes we all have budgets okay if you have to wait six months later to save the money to actually get, get a qualified carpenter, mm. wait. It's to your benefit nice. versus hiring somebody that's going to come in and do a halfway job that's going to destroy your overall dream right from the beginning. We don't want you to get demoralized from the gate. We want you to be motivated. We want you to start off on the right foot. You know, make sure you have somebody that has a plan that both understand how to read basic blueprints and that can actually design what you envision, not what they feel like building for you once they have your money. Yes, that is <laughs> so true. And by the way, guys, whatever we are really discussing here is out of experience. We've already built a goat house before. This is our second one here. Yeah. So whatever we are discussing with you guys is the real truth. It is what is on ground. So if you just make a mistake and hire someone who is not who is not trained, who is not done anything like this, you're going to really waste a lot of money. And of course, the mistakes that we did from the previous house, these are things that we had to correct in this other one here. Of course, we corrected what was there before, but in the beginning when we started, there were mistakes that were made, but we corrected all that. So this other structure here you see, we had to make sure no mistakes were made. And also as the owner of the farm, always be keen to come and check the progress of the work. Because sometimes this, you give the contract to the engineer, to the carpenter to come and do the work and you don't show up. Trust me, you're going to really get frustrated when you come and maybe there are a few mistakes that have been made, yet you were supposed to be correcting that in the initial stages. So be on ground, be at least persistent, keep checking on the progress of the work so that you don't get frustrated in the long run. 
that is one piece of advice for all farmers there. But this is it. We have different sections. Section Pregnant. we're standing in here, guys. This mm -hmm. is ex this is essentially Gen Pop One, right? What do we mean <laughs> by that? This is where we're gonna keep some of the growers, right? Yeah. When we actually wean the kids from their mom, this is gonna be one of the pens one they're of the gonna sections. stay in. Mm. Now we're gonna take you to the other section yeah. where we're gonna be keeping the expected bombs and the actual defined space. Yeah. So that way they are they, they get comfortable, comfortable in their own section because mm -hmm. As we told you guys in a previous video, you want them to get used to the environment before they deliver. Yeah. And you want them to be in that same space so that way they can bond with the kids. Because sometimes some of these moms will definitely reject their kids. And may I, may I share this with you guys? Okay. Especially for the rookies out there. When your goods are delivering, unless the actual a mom needs your assistant, do not help. Okay? Mm -hmm. Especially when the kid comes out, Right, especially if the sack is still there and everything else is there, let the mom come and lick the kid clean. That's not just for aesthetics. It's a, that's actually how they actually bond, bond. Yeah. with the kids, right? So you want that to take place. And the best way you can do that once they clean up the kid itself, you want them to be in their section to be left alone. The mother's gonna be super tired. Afterwards, <laughs> the kid, of course, you know, you want to make sure that you witness that kid take their first taste of the cholesterol, right? Mm. Because once that happens, then you know that kid is on the right track. They're getting all the vitals that they need from that first drink from the mom. And sometimes you might actually have to help them, right? I know that's, you know, may, there are differing opinions on that. Mm. Sometimes you might actually help that kid get that first drink so that they can start to gain some strength in order to continue the journey beyond that point. Yeah, but we're definitely going to show you guys the other sections, the different sections that we have in this house. And the beauty about this structure as well, we also have the exercising yard outside. Yeah. So we're not going to keep our goats confined here all the time. We are going to be letting them out to exercise, which is really very key when you're constructing your goat house. I know most people will be like, you know, I don't have enough space, I don't have enough land, but at least secure some space for your goats to exercise. They need that, you know? They don't need a mega space. They just exactly. need to be able to get out of the house, stretch their stretch legs, get some fresh air. Plus the reason the exercise yard is extremely important, they need to be able to get out of the house so that it could be disinfected, disinfected so that it can be well. clean. Mm. And another interesting feature about this particular house that we learned from the other house, mm. because where we located, even though during the dry season, it's so hot here, you would think you're in Dante's Inferno <laughs> because this place gets so hot. So hot. But in the evening, it gets very, very cool. Mm -hmm. So what we did in this structure, instead of just encasing the kids section with the higher level of iron sheet, right? We actually raised it to this level all around because let's face it, you know, the coldness is not good for any goats because mm -hmm. they don't like to be wet, they don't like to be cold. And part of the reason we actually added the extra iron sheet and to this here. height is so that way sometime when it rains sideways, we are in Uganda after all, right? Mm -hmm. Subtropical climate here. Yeah. It does, we do get the sideways rains. We make sure we have cover protection all the way around. But because of the elevation of the house, we have more than enough airflow yeah. that will pass through the house. And I think this was definitely something we learned from the other place that, that we, I would say, incorporated in this design and I'm very happy with the way it came out. We really did our our costs for building this structure here, from the flooring, then when the structure was put up, then to the roofing as well. And I know most of you are really, especially for startup farmers, want to know how much did we really spend on this? We did not really spend so much because as I told you earlier on, we used basic items that we get from the local market where we are. And remember prices of these items here differ from locations as well. That's why we don't want to be very specific with the prices because what we that's, spend here is different. That's true. And as you, as you see, while we're here, this time around, we actually use a lot more rough cuts. I would say, you know, some of the timber that's in here, we did not go with the hardwood finishes. The flooring itself is a different story. I, I, she'll tally up the numbers from the previous videos, or better yet, go back and watch the other videos, the other videos that we yeah. did on both the foundation, the course of timber. But I would say overall, a rough estimate of what we spent to build this house from start to finish, you're looking at at least like 1,700 to 2,000 USD, give or take a few hundred. Now, the reason we're giving you that number, 
you might be able to negotiate a better price, a better for, price for yourself. Right? Yeah. You may be able to negotiate a better price for the, the cost of materials. Some of you out there might actually have your own eucalyptus, whereas we have to buy. To buy, you yeah. You might too. actually have these answers in your garden. But if you were to look at cost of nails, iron sheets, cement, these are the things that we can't make <laughs> mm -hmm. or grow yes, in sir. our own farm. You know, the overall price with hard cost materials for iron sheets, cement, labor, iron bars, nails, between 1700 to 2000 2100 somewhere around there is actually what USD. I remember seeing on the budget. And actually we came at budget. Um, the only thing that kind of took us over the last contract that we were using, there were some mistakes that were made on the flooring that yeah. we had to bring in we'll other people correct. and we actually had to buy additional timber to fix. That's what took us over. But if we had everything done right the first time, if we're not so picky mm -hmm. about how we wanted, <laughs> we wanted that structure to be, to be like, this could have easily been done for 1700 USD. And even that even brings us like why the delays had to come yes. in because I know you guys have been really waiting for this structure. You've been waiting to see yeah. how it looks like and we've not been showing you guys because of the few mistakes that we, you know, we didn't want to show you guys. That we saw, but we wanted to be corrected. To correct it. So yeah. the house is finally here. We are happy. The goats will be here next time when you see the next video. You see the goats in their pen already here. Yeah. Yes, because we're going to transfer them anytime from today. Yeah. But we are super excited, guys. This is it for this video. We'll show you guys in the B roll the other sections. The other sections as well. But please, if you learned something, one or two things, leave your comments down below. Any questions, leave your your questions down below as well so that we can be able to interact we can be able to answer you never know another farmer can also answer you guys do not leave the questions there if you have the answers please leave your opinions as well but we really appreciate you guys so much thank you so much if you watched this video up to this point please just just give us a like just give us a thumbs up and also at least share that's what we only need from you guys and also do not forget to go to our social media platform guys instagram is value farm ug Facebook value farm, TikTok value farm. Guys, we have the behind the scenes and we are also sharing knowledge on the other platforms. But really appreciate you guys so much. Subscribe, like, and share. Till next time. Bye. Bye.